When I first moved out and got out on my own and graduated from college and started working full time and lived by myself, I made quite a bit of money mistakes and I didn't even realize half of them at the time because they don't seem like, you know, they're financial mistakes or you're messing up or anything like that. It just feels like you're just living life. And that's how a lot of us start to head in the wrong direction financially from the very beginning. I was able to realize my mistakes and turn them around and I just want to make this video right here to give you some money advice if you're just now moving out and getting out on your own. And I want to share with you a lot of things that I wish I knew myself when I did the same thing. So if that interests you, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. We're about to get started right now. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Reggie Bryant. I'm the author of The Wealth Journey, and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth. So the first mistake I made wasn't something that I actually did financially. It was actually something that I wasn't doing. When I first got started out on my own, I was in such a blissful state of mind. I was so happy that I had freedom, my own place, my own car, my own everything, my own full-time job that I live like two minutes away from. I was so happy that I didn't even think to start planning ahead. I didn't do a ton of that at all. Like, as a matter of fact, I really didn't do it at all until I started realizing, man, like, if I don't plan now, I'm gonna be in a situation later. And planning is supposed to start before you move out. Not after you done moved out, not after you done started your job, not after you're just now trying to get acclimated to a job and learn that, and then also learn personal finance at the same time. That's the wrong time, so don't be like me. You can start out like 10 steps ahead of where I was when I first started. And the way you do that is you start planning before. So the first part of the plan that I would recommend, you know, before you even move out of your parents' house in today's economy, you need to have anywhere between 20 and $25,000 saved up already. Which by the way, is a lot easier to do if you're living with your parents than it is when you're on your own. And I know that sounds like a lot and I know a lot of people don't wanna wait that long and a lot of you just wanna move out of your parents' house like right now, but you gotta understand the economy is not in the same state that it was when I was 21 or when I first moved out. And that was six years ago. So a lot of things have changed in that short amount of time. Back then, if you were getting like a single bedroom apartment, that would be between like $600 and $800. And that's for like a really nice one. Nowadays, we're looking at double that cost. Not to mention the price of cars, food, gas. I can keep going, but you get the idea. Prices are up. Inflation has been absolutely ridiculous. And bottom line, you need to have between twenty dollars and $25,000 saved up already. I promise you, if you do that and you start off like that, you will be more financially established than most people who have been living on their own for 10 years. And in some cases, even more than that. And then the second part of this, and this right here is a killer combo. So if you follow both of these right off the bat, oh, you, you're gonna be thanking me. You're gonna be thanking me. But anyway, we're gonna jump straight into the advice. The good rule of thumb is you don't wanna pay rent that is more than 30% of your income. Now keep in mind that is just a rule of thumb, but it's a good way to gauge if you're paying way too much or if you can pay a little bit more and get a bit of a nicer place. And I say that because you really wanna take into consideration exactly where you're moving, what kind of area is it, you know, what kind of quality are these apartments? Am I gonna to have to worry about sleeping with roaches? Am I gonna to have to worry about, you know, rats? Am I gonna, what am I gonna to have to worry about? Crime, anything? You wanna move into a clean area where there's little to no crime and you wanna feel safe and you wanna feel comfortable. But that doesn't necessarily mean you gotta move into a luxury apartment to feel that way. You get what I mean? So, so what you wanna do is look at how much money you make per year and understand that that's not the actual amount of money that you make per year. If you make $50,000 a year, $40,000 per year, you don't really make that much. You need to look at what you're making after taxes per year. And if you don't know that number quite yet, it's not a big deal. I didn't know what that yearly number was myself. So what I did was I just looked at one of the paychecks that I got and I looked at how much I made per paycheck after taxes. And I knew that I got paid twice every month. So I just multiplied one paycheck by two after taxes, of course. And then I just multiplied that by 12 and that gave me how much I made per year after taxes. And by the way, the advice that I give you in this video is gonna sound simple, but it's gonna be pretty intricate when it comes to the action. So don't worry, you will receive a move out guide. If you're interested in it, I will have a link in the description. And I'll also talk about it more throughout this video so you know exactly what you're getting. And it's 100% free. So anyway, once you get that number, which I will have a calculation thing within the move out guide that you get. But once you get that number, you wanna multiply it by 30% and then see what that number is. That number is gonna give you exactly how much you should expect paying in rent if you were to go by the 30% rule of thumb. Now, if you get a number like 
$1,700 or something like that, you know, okay, you know, I can get me a pretty nice place. And, it, and remember, it doesn't have to be like super extravagant. Definitely check the ratings. Definitely reach out to these places. Definitely take tours. You know, see what people think about this stuff. And this is going to give you a very good idea of what you can expect. And then you can play with the number a little bit. You say, you know what, I don't need to pay $1,700. Maybe I can get away with $1,400, $1,200. And then you can just check out the places and just apply the rest of the advice I'm giving you. And I'm telling you, this right here will put you so far ahead of where you would be if you didn't follow this advice. It is ridiculous. This is the type of advice that will keep you away from stressing about money. This will be the advice that you already have a good savings. You already have, you know, the good salary. You already have have an apartment that you're not overpaying for. And so you're going to have a lot less stress just in life in general. You'll be able to afford a lot more things and you'll be a lot more strategic and intentional and meaningful about where your money goes. So that's what I recommend you do. That's what I really wish I did because I did not follow that rule myself and I got a place that was way bigger than what I needed. I don't think a single person with no kids needs a two-story townhouse. <laughs> yeah, not apartment, but townhouse, two-story townhouse with two bedrooms, two and a half bathrooms. Not necessary. Cool place. Wasn't necessary, but that was a lesson I learned early on and now I'm able to pass on the information to you. So anyway, the next piece of advice I would give you is you want to be very intentional about what your financial goals are because I was intentional about my financial goals, but first of all, I planned way too late in the game. I'm talking like months after I moved out and my goals were kind of like substantial. So let me let you know what I mean. I was so focused on financial freedom and financial independence and entrepreneurship and all these other things that I wasn't that focused on becoming financially established. Before you do any of that, you have to become financially stable. You have to become financially established. Then you keep building onto it. You have to walk before you can run. So that was something I had to realize early on if I was ever going to realize any of my financial goals. And the way you do that is you make sure your budget is on point. And I made a video last week about a simple budgeting method for beginners. I highly recommend that you watch that video because that's going to give you a very good insight. Of course, once you move in and everything, but the thing is you plan before you move in. And so you already have an idea of how you're going to budget your money because you already know, okay, cool. I'm going to be paying $1,100 in rent. Cool. I already know how much my car payment is. Cool. I already have an idea of how much my grocery shopping is going to be. I know how much my gym membership is going to be. Cool. So you're already going to have an idea. And it's going to take you a few months to actually master how your budget is going to be. But that's okay. You just want to get started. It doesn't have to be perfect. This isn't like a test that you're going to pass or fail. This is like a, a trial that you're going to run with yourself. Okay, I think this is how much I'm going to be paying a month. This, these are the bills that I know how much they cost. And you might miscalculate a few times, so what? It's just you and you. You're just planning your finances for the future. But once you figure out how to budget, that right there is going to be cool. And I, I know that it's not like a thing that people want to do. Budgeting isn't the most fun thing to do, but it doesn't take that long. You literally only need to do it once a month. And you can revisit it every single month and see what adjustments you need to make. And then you just go from there. It's really not that big of a deal. Like, a responsible adult needs to take the time to actually plan out their finances. You need to take the time to plan out, okay, how much am I spending in needs? How much am I spending on what I want? And how much am I putting in my savings? And speaking of savings, at the beginning of this video, I did say you want to have between twenty dollars and $25,000 in your savings account. Okay, well, a good rule of thumb for personal finances, you want to have three to six months worth of expenses. I take that to a different level, four to eight months worth of paychecks. So that 25 grand you already have in your bank account, ideally, of course, how many months worth of paychecks is that? And if it's not four to eight months worth of paychecks, then you just keep adding on to it till it is. But it's not like you have any crazy amount of pressure to get that stacked up to that number like right now, like immediately. You already got 25 grand, so you're going to already have less stress just based off of that. Most people don't even have a thousand or five thousand in their savings account, but you're going to have 25 grand with a good job, not overpaying in rent, you're going to already pre-calculate how much money should go into which category, which is what that set, uh, which is what that budgeting video is going to give you. And also, if you download the move out guide, it will also have a link to the budgeting guide as well. So I'm, I'm giving it all to you and it's all for free. Free advice that puts money in your pocket. Ain't nothing wrong with that. 
Now, the third piece of advice is a two-in-one, but I will give you the courtesy of putting the most valuable one last. I want you to really, really, really focus on being financially established. This is after the budget. This is after you pre-planned everything. This is after you've started working. You want to really focus on being financially established. I'm talking good credit. I'm talking about not having debt. And I'm talking having a crazy good savings account with what we just mentioned. And sometimes it's going to be hard to understand which one to focus on. Am I going to focus on debt? Am I going to focus on saving? Am I going to focus on something else? What do I even focus on? Do I focus on investing? Like, what do I need to do? I would say if you're able to get that 25 grand before you move out, saving is already, it's already been a big priority of your life. So I would continue to save, yes, but I would then start to knock down bits of debt, like bit by bit, and then put in extra money that you have at the end of the month towards your debt. Especially if it's like credit card debt, you don't want to just have credit card debt just sitting there because it's going to grow pretty quickly, especially if you don't do anything about it and you're just paying like the minimum payment and you owe like a thousand dollars or something. You want to definitely make sure you're aggressive about your credit card debt. As for stuff like student loans, like if you have student loans, you can take your time with those because they're low interest and it's not like they're going to accumulate crazy amounts of money. You still want to be focused on them, but you don't need to be aggressive like you do with credit cards and stuff like that. Remember, this is all about having money in your pocket, not having debt, and just feeling relaxed, feeling free to make decisions. Like you're not going to go around feeling bad about going out to eat because you've already pre-planned where your money's going to go anyway. And as you get real good with this and as you feel real comfortable, you can check out my video about where your money should go once you get paid because that gives you even more detailed information on where you can put your money and make it grow year over year. And that is how you end up building wealth because this right here, this video right here isn't about building wealth. This right here is about getting you established. This is about you getting out on your own for the first time so you can be comfortable financially and you're not broke on bills because we don't need that. I mean, a lot of people out here look successful. They look like they got a good job. They look like they have a nice car, nice apartment, or even a nice house in some cases. And, the, and on Instagram, you know, it looks like they're having a big, happy, lovely, fun-filled life, right? But the truth is, you can have all these nice things, and sure, they can afford it, but in reality, they could be broke on bills, meaning every single paycheck they have goes towards every single one of their bills, and so they feel like they're scraping pennies at the end of the month just to get through before their next paycheck. You don't want to deal with that. I promise you, you don't. And right now, some families and some individuals, they have to do that. And that's just how their life is. And it's going to be a slow process to build back up to where they don't have to do that anymore. But what I'm telling you is this advice right here can actually get you to a place where you never have to worry about that. And that in itself is an amazing thing. Because if information like this was available years ago, things would be a lot different. And I'll even go on the record and say this. When I first moved out, I should have had 10 to 15 grand in my bank account. Even though the economy was good, I still should have had between 10 and 15 grand in my bank account because anything could have happened. Could you imagine if COVID happened just a few years later? I would, I would be toast because the company I worked at back then, they shut down. And speaking of my last company, I want to give you some quick advice about careers. I think I am one of the best people to give you advice on your career because I am in a management position and I see a lot of these things and I give a lot of people career advice on a daily basis on how to grow, on how to expand, on how to become better versions of themselves within their careers and how to make more money and all of that good stuff. The biggest tip I can give you is even if you take a full-time job that you hate, don't be the person that just quits without options just because you have 25, 30, 35 grand in your bank account. Don't do that because you need to build. Give it at least a year. And then once you've made it a year, give yourself at least a year and a half. That's exactly word for word what I did because I wanted, trust me, I wanted to leave like the moment I started hating things, which by the way was three months into the job, but I really had to consult with myself as well as some wise family members to see if that was a smart decision because in reality, it wasn't going to be a smart decision. Like, yeah, it sucked. Yeah, it was a very hellacious experience and I never want to go through that again and I will never wish that on my worst enemy. But even so, the lesson I want you to learn from this is this is time for you to learn. This is time for you to build your experience and expertise within a job. And this is how you can build a competitive advantage that no one else has. Because if you are resilient enough to go through an experience that you cannot stand, but you're learning every day, but you're bettering yourself every day, but you're improving every single day, you're going to be more resilient than anybody else. And that right there by itself will take you miles ahead of everyone.
and it'll give you better opportunities to provide for yourself. And whenever you have a family, your family as well. I didn't realize how valuable that experience was to me, but I just see in my job right now, like how resilient I am compared to like other people. It's ridiculous. Like there's a bunch of things that go on. Like any challenge that happens, it feels like a piece of cake now. And it's also good for you monetarily because it gives you more consistent income. And the biggest thing about income is consistency is king. So if you constantly have paychecks coming in, you don't want to go a month or two without paychecks. That's miserable. Even if you have 25 grand, how long is that going to last you? That's why I recommend you, you stay the course and you keep getting better. And then as you get better, then you can start applying for other jobs and they'll take you in a heartbeat. Hey, this experience is valuable. But if you just quit, well, you don't really have the track record you know, or the notoriety of your experience. And I'll just leave you with this. This right here is very valuable advice. When you're an adult, man or woman, it does not matter. When you're an adult, everything in life that happens to you is your fault. That's how you have to look at it. So for example, if you go to a job that you hate, you took that job. You made the choice to take that job. They might have, you know, talked real good and real smooth to you to make you get up in there. You know what I'm saying? They might have offered you a nice salary and everything else. It might be more money than you've ever seen in your life. But you have to ask yourself, what are the pros and cons of this? And if at that time the pros look better than the cons and you take it, cool. But just understand that with anything in life, you might be miscalculated. And that's okay. You learn from your mistakes, but don't go around blaming your mistakes or your misfortunes on other people because that right there puts you in a victim's mentality and it constantly recreates excuses in your mind and it will inhibit you from becoming the best version of yourself. You know, it's just like adults now that complain about their bills or whatever the case is. You made the choice to do that. It doesn't matter if your friends or family talks you into it. You decided to do that. You didn't weigh the pros and cons like you should have. If you're not where you want to be financially, you have to think, this is my fault. What do I need to do to improve that? And that right there is going to make you stronger. It's going to make you more money. And it's just going to make you a better person. So it's just best to keep that type of mentality. Those are the things that I learned when I first moved out and got out on my own. And those were extremely valuable lessons that helped put several more dollars into my pocket. So I really hope you enjoyed this video and liked it as much as I enjoyed making it. Download the link in the description if you want to. It's going to have a move out guide. It's going to show you just the steps that I was talking about in this video, but it's going to be in more detail. It's going to show you exactly what the action steps are. It's going to have a link to that budgeting guide that I was talking to you about, because let's be honest, you know, anyone can listen to someone and anyone can say, oh, well, that sounds good. OK, I know what to do. But a lot of times we might not exactly know where to start. What is the budgeting method exactly? Like, how should I prioritize my finances? What is important? How do I become established? These questions will be answered within the guide. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Yo, my name is Reggie Bryant. This channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you control your finances, and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.